There, he's over there. He's about to die. And GG. We got second kills. Hey there guys, MCB here, and today we are going to be playing some Invaded Landscape PvP, and in this episode I would like to try my best to show you how to complete some of the Invaded Lands events. With this recent uh, reset, they added three new game modes, which are Wool Shuffle, Team Deathmatch, and one in the chamber which actually used to be a game mode but they removed it because of lack of players kind of like how they did with uh, soup a while ago and kpp v2 um and i've done around half of these events i've completed them um others i might be able to find clips from older videos and maybe throw those in i'm not really sure but i haven't been uploading very much as of recently and i want to try to do better with that so i'm uh gonna be trying to get this out to you a lot earlier than i had anticipated uh i'm also working on getting clips for like three or four other uh invaded videos and i have ideas for like nine different ones it just takes a while because on invaded uh the gameplay isn't very fun to watch just by itself without commentary and it's also very hard to commentate just like a normal pvp um so i'm gonna I, i've got a few ideas of things i might be able to do so I'm, I'm gonna be trying to get some more videos out for you guys and um yeah anyways let's get straight into the video all right so we will begin with the brackets event which is probably the most pvp based event maybe sumo might beat it but I'd, I'd say this is the most pvp based um and probably therefore the one that you may have the most trouble with um luckily although a lot of people on the server are pretty good at like actual melee there is a lot of uh, lacking in bow skill and a lot of lacking in strategy so you won't have any trouble um well at least not much trouble fighting people in brackets when you stick to bow and strategy so you can see in these first two fights uh, i went relatively aggressive against them and uh, unfortunately for them they were not the greatest meleeers so that didn't turn out well um then this third person i believe he had a really high ping so i decided not to try to bow him very much he was also like i don't know 316 or something so instead i just went in for the melee because when they have high ping or when you have high ping it's never fun to bow and melee is always gonna result in a combo for one side you just need to make sure that you you know play the play your cards right so that the combo is on your end instead of them getting a combo on you so um yeah and this fourth person i believe i just bow fight for like 40 seconds so uh nothing too important here i will skip over to drut which is the last fight actually i uh forgot to say he does try to bow spam uh which is a strategy that i see a lot of people use in brackets they kind of use the bow as like a makeshift rod i guess to like knock you back so that they can get a hit um it takes a while to charge up though so as long as you're like constantly on them and melee they aren't really going to be able to use it to get a combo and more just to get you off of them temporarily and also uh like charging up the bow so it doesn't really do all that much anyways um drut here we just do a little bit of bowing, um, but the main thing comes after the melee. He goes in for the melee, which is good. You know, that's what you want to do, and I go in for the melee as well. We get, like, I think a three-hit combo there or something like that. Nothing too uh, insane. Then he goes over here to gap, uh, and I would suggest that you try to rush people while they gap, but you probably should be closer than I was because I wasn't very close. Then I gap, but if I didn't bow him back there, I would have probably died. He would have gotten three crit hits on me, and I would have died. But luckily, I bowed him back, uh, I was able to heal, and then we were able to get the kill pretty easily. So that, my friends, is how you win a Brackets event. Alright, we got a team deathmatch event here. I would tell you some strategies, but there really aren't many. Just basically pay attention to your hearts and try not to get team done, and also try to team with other people, if that makes any sense. Just, like, be... Be very cautious, fight in groups, and do not fight against groups, alright? It's a really, really bad idea to go against any of that. That's just, like, the most basic advice there is. Is this a guy on the enemy team? I think it is. I think it's a kill that we can take. Unless my entire team decides to go after them instead, you know, there's that, too. There's, oh, there's a guy over here that we can maybe go after. 
Um, is this guy? That's an enemy. We can go after this guy. No, he's dead already. Okay. Um, hmm. What shall we do? This may be hard. This may be hard. Uh, thought he was on our team. I thought he wasn't on our team, rather. Okay, yep. Not taking that. C, 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 C. Now they decide the team fight. That's where you gotta make sure it doesn't happen. Alright, we got two kills. Two possible kills here. Alright, we're gonna try to kill I Sneeze. Yeah, okay, we got I Sneeze. Let's get this guy now. Uh, we got him. Alright, so that's pretty much a guaranteed win as long as our team doesn't lose. So that's pretty nice. Uh, let's see if we can maybe get first place. We're not getting first place with that guy. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, red is losing right now, so I think we've got this. I think we do. I think we do have this. Uh, this guy's decided to come over, <laughs> which was a bad idea by him, but you know, whatever. Uh, DC Fatson got the kill, but I still think I have a pretty high chance of winning. Contact's here. Uh, I don't want to fight him, so I'm not going to. Uh, 25. Oh, that's 25 MB. You're not on my team, so you die. Okay, I got that kill. Nice. Alright, so that's three kills now. 25 was trying to kill me, so... I'm not letting that happen. Alright, we got that kill. That's four kills. Alright, we're getting pretty close to the top now. There's only seven red left. Yeah, we've definitely got this game in the bag. Alright, there's... Oh, there's two over here. Contacts is one. Nope. Nope. He gapped. Alright. And they turned back. So, I think they're some of the last ones left. So we can take care of contacts here. Alright, there we go. There's contacts. Uh, who's left? There's a single red left, and I'm sure he's hiding somewhere, but I don't know where. Oh, he's over there. He's over there. He's about to die. And GG. We got second kills. Tied 17 got top kills. Uh, so, yeah, very nice. That's an event key. A very easy free event key um, for top killers. Yep. And uh, there's there's pretty much all my strategy. It's, it's really very simple compared to the other events. Um, there's not much strategy involved in it, but yeah, pretty nice. Alright, so next up here is a Race of Death event. Now, uh, I'm just going to start right here. Make sure you really, really focus on this very first stretch of parkour because this is where most people fail because, you know, all the players are in the same area and the name tags and everything blocks you, so definitely focus on that. The second spot isn't that hard. It's just, you know, normal parkour and fence parkour. Shift after, like, every jump onto a single thing, I guess, a single fence. You should probably shift. Um, but if it's longer, it's not a big deal. Uh, focus on head hitter parts. I think there's two different parts like this in the parkour. And on ladders, you don't even have to shift if you're trying to go up. Honestly, it's you, you can just like walk up. I shifted just to be you know safe and not walk off. But yeah. Um, in this cobweb parts, don't um, don't try to like jump over cobwebs. Just trust me. Don't don't try to take any shortcuts. Just go the long way. Um, and then here you can skip that bottom ladder. You can actually go up to the second ladder, which saves you a small amount of time. Uh, you've got a four block jump there, which is pretty hard. You can entirely skip this blue part of parkour. You can just go up the water. Um, on here, you can actually go up this door and then do not sprint jump on these doors. Just a normal jump. Uh, on here, uh, yeah, here's the rest of the head hitters. Definitely focus on these. They are very important. And then we've got a three block jump with head hitter. And that's, that's it. It's pretty simple. So yeah, hopefully that helped you. All right, so next up, we've got ourselves a water drop event. I forgot to uh, commentate over this, so we're gonna be doing it in post commentary instead. <clears throat> um, these first, like, I think it's like 10 rounds or something, usually aren't very hard because they aren't one block uh, gaps. So essentially you can just line yourself up um, with like the brick because the stone brick texture is usually, you're able to line yourself up. Maybe it's just in my pack, but you can line yourself up directly in the middle. Um, and then actually it's round 15. Round 15 goes into one block jumps. It might be different rounds, I'm not really sure, but for me it was round 15. 
Um, and the first one isn't very hard because you can just go directly in the middle of the thing. Uh, once it goes against the walls, that's when it gets to be really hard. Those are probably my weakest jump, but the thing that I would suggest you do is like when you get close to the wall, you, you want to like aim for slightly in front of the wall and then right at the last moment you want to push back against the wall which you're going to be able to see that i did right here i just hold s like the moment i get near the water um and try to push myself against the wall but i make sure that i do it like after i'm actually down um but the like ones that are separated in like four corners that one's not very hard just one that we're doing right here um and any ones where it's directly in the middle never is really too hard um, there's ones where there's one like all the way on the right and one all the way on the left Which is sort of the same thing as uh, what I just said about pressing S to hold backwards You can do that, but just hold it to the right um, And I also would definitely suggest that you use zoom for this uh, So so get Optifine if you don't already have it most people do but get Optifine uh, and zoom and also I believe in 1.7.10 because I had 1.7 animations. It might not be 1.7.10, it might just be 1.7 animations. Um, the zoom animations messed up, so use 1.8. Alright guys, so we've got a red rover event right here. Now, this is not one of the new events that's been added. Um, it is pretty old, but I do like the new map. Uh, I will say, the new map is definitely a lot better than the old one. The old one was just... The old one wasn't even really a map. I don't think you can even call it that, but this one's like a nice nice big map it kind of looks like a dropper map if that makes any sense just the kind of big i don't know exactly what you call this type of build macro whatever point is it's a very large build uh and it reminds me of a dropper map um but red rover is pretty simple not exactly the most challenging of uh game modes doesn't take too much skill there's a little bit of strategy involved but you can learn it pretty quickly basically uh you see that guy in diamond gear over there blaziken Itter, uh, basically just like don't let him kill you if you get hit by him twice in a row you die it's not good so like don't fall in there and don't let him hit you before you go over it uh, and don't let other people hit you to him and you're pretty good um, my my strategy is leave when the countdown is at three that way um, you get across pretty much right as the round um as the new round starts and the last round ends uh which basically catches the diamonds off guard and also the rest of these people aren't going to be over there so you can't really get hit in uh and then if you want to you can wait at the edge and try to hit people back in uh or you can just go onto the other side and play passively it really depends on your play style i mainly play passively uh but if i decide to play aggro i mean i could stand on one side and just hit people back in and i'll show you a little bit of that uh, in these next few rounds, I don't usually do that, but it's, I guess it's pretty effective, you could say. So let me just jump across here. There's that guy, that's Toxically. Uh, but there you go, I already got someone in. And we can hit maybe this guy in. Nah, there's the thing blocking. We almost hit this guy in. Oh, he doesn't stop. Alright. But yeah, so we got one person that round. Got another person. We can hit this flame bullet side, flame bullets guy in maybe. There we go. There we go. This person's trying to hit us, and we can't be letting that happen. So let's jump over here. Let's see. How about this guy? We can hit you in, right? No. Okay. Yeah. But we got two people in. It, it's it, as I said, it is pretty effective. I don't like playing that way, um, just because if you do it, other people are gonna try to do it to you. That, how did that guy get out? Someone must have hit him out. Also, that's the other thing. Uh, I'd sacrifice myself to show you this, but I don't think it's likely that I'll be able to actually show this. But basically, when you're in here, just stay jumping and against the wall, pushing like outwards, I guess, if that makes any sense. Like, uh, say this is the wall that you need to get out of, just jump here and uh, aim towards this while you're moving forward. And you actually have a decent chance of getting out because if they hit you, uh, if either like another person that's been hidden with you hits you or the actual like killer or whatever they're called uh, hits you, there's a pretty decent chance that they'll knock you out because if you're jumping, the knockback that you'll take should be enough to push you up and out of the uh, little red rover death box pretty much. Um, 
and honestly like half the times that i get knocked in there i'm able to get knocked out so yeah it's pretty nice you can also have a per if you have like friends because teaming is allowed in red over by the way just for the record uh if you have friends they can try to punch you out that's a possibility as well so um yeah definitely a good uh, a good way to avoid death i guess you could say just a good way to avoid death now there's not too much else that i can really narrate on i've kind of said everything there is to it so i will just uh fast forward to the end of this round or not the end of this round to the end of this match and if i lose this one then i'll just cut that commentary and stuff i just did to whatever game i end up winning because you know it applies for every game it doesn't matter which uh match it is but uh yeah all right guys i've just been organizing my vault for the past uh 15 minutes or so because they're very messy uh now they're a lot better i still need to organize the uh, prop one sets though but a wool shuffle event is starting uh i'm not going to commentate uh over this and so i will add the um tips tricks tutorial etc in um post-production post-production ncb here uh, I'm going to be trying to give you my best tips on this, so uh, the, the way that I usually play Wool Shuffle is I just kind of run around uh, looking, I guess, kind of aimless, um, and I just, I, I pretend that I have no clue where any, like, yellow patch is, and then I just jump onto the patch, like, right at the very last second, pretty much. Uh, that minimizes the chance that you'll get hit off, because they don't have to hit you off, you know, two seconds before, they have to hit you off half a second before, so it's, it's... Not very likely that you'll uh, get hit off in that way. You also have the strategy of tr uh, fake teaming with people and then hitting them off. I don't do that because it's scummy. And you also have the strategy of basically backstabbing someone and hitting them off and then taking their place, which I don't do because A, it's scummy and B, um, it's a little risky. It's a little risky, definitely. Uh, but this round, I believe Edzu does that. I think I think that's his name. Yeah, Edzu does that, and that's how we end up getting the win. Uh, by the way, after the very first round, it gets rid. After the first round, like forty people are gone, or like usually around half the match. And then after the second round, that's another like quarter of the match. So after those first two or three rounds, honestly, the competition is down to like a quarter of what it originally was, and it's a lot easier. And as you can see, we're not even to round 10, and there are six players left. Six. Two of which are teaming, I believe. Those two skeppies in the middle of the map. Um, and then there's me, Edzu, and two other guys. And those two other guys end up dying, uh, and Edzu hits off the others, or I, I believe maybe, maybe they betray each other. I'm not really sure what goes on but uh, it's, it's nothing too special. And uh, yeah, you can just see at the very end here, yeah, he knocks them both off and takes their place because they weren't exactly paying attention. And leaves us last three. He st he pretends to stay on his own spot, then he goes over to there and knocks that guy off. But unfortunately, he gets hit back and I end up winning. So, you know, not too hard. Uh, this is a strategy a lot of people use, so it's not just exclusive to Ed too. <laughs> but um yeah, that is how you win Wool Shuffle. And now we will be doing all of the events we weren't able to get to earlier, um, basically in rapid succession. I don't actually have an Eclipse of these, so I'm just going to be doing it here, but the um, strategies can still be said. So we'll start off with Sumo, W tap or S tap. Uh, shift tapping doesn't work very well, and obviously you can't block it. Uh, let's see. One in the chamber, focus on bow because your sword, you know, takes like four or five hits to kill and your bow takes one hit to kill. Also, uh, try to clean people because then you won't lose as much health and you'll get a lot more arrows and you'll get a lot more kills. And, you know, the arrows from said kills will then help you grind more kills, you know, so on and so forth. Try to chain with your bow. So definitely practice bow aim for that. King of the hill, just hide in one of the corners and uh, hit people. Really, that's all you gotta do. Last man standing, uh, there are a few places to hide um, around the mountains, and also there are like pillars in the middle of the map that you can go into. Most people know uh, when you're in there, because you can actually see into the pillars um, from quite a few different angles, but when you're up on the mountains, that's a pretty valuable spot to be camping, um, because often the teamers will be on the ground, and if you have the high ground, Anakin, uh, you can... You can 
do pretty well. You can bow spam them from up there. You can, if they try to, you know, scale the walls of the mountain, you can knock them back down and they'll take a lot of fall damage, etc. So yeah, that's definitely a good spot to be. And you can also hide in a few little dips uh, nearby the mountains or behind the houses or in the pillars. So here we got Spleef. Uh, basically, you just want to run as far away as possible, especially in the first five seconds, because after the five second like uh, grace period, there's a massive lag spike in the worst your PC. The longer you'll be frozen, the more time that people with better PCs can dig out under you. But after that, you really just want to run the entire game and hide. Do not try to Spleef anyone until you're at like the final ten, probably not even that. I'd say final five. And also, I've just noticed that there's a one in the chamber event, which is actually the first one that I've seen since day one. So we're going to be joining that TNT tag. Uh, the first round, you just want to run. Do not focus on like trading with someone. Just run. Just run. Um, and I already gave tips for the others. So yeah, I will be joining this event and hopefully I will actually be able to win this and then put it um, over the top of the commentary I just did. But uh, if not, then, you know, I didn't exactly expect to. But uh, yeah, anyways, let's head on to the outro. And I didn't actually record an outro, so I'm just gonna be doing a voiceover on some old PvP footage. So yeah, that is basically it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, I'm going to be working on my pack uh, over the next few days, possibly weeks, I'm not really sure. But yeah, that's gonna be it. So I hope you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe if you did. And uh, I will see you all in my next episode of Invaded Lands Kit PvP. Peace.